it is an absolute pleasure to have you with us here today, Paul. And uh, we are hoping to find out more about you while you speak to us at this national conference. Welcome. Thank you very much. Am I audible? Am I visible? Yes, you are. Thank you very much. Um, uh, program directors, uh, Mr. Elvin uh, Gallant, thank you so much. And uh, to you, Francis, um, we come a long way in, in this field and it is indeed an honor that um, I am welcomed by yourselves to uh, speak at this very conference. Uh, may I take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, um, to humble myself and greet our honorable uh, minister, I call her Mama, our minister, uh, Mama Lindy Wazulu, a member of parliament, and she is indeed our minister of social development. A minister of social development, ladies and gentlemen, puts bread on my table, and I'm honored and humbled uh, that uh, I am uh, following immediately after she spoke. It really is an honor to me. Um, her passion for children and her passion for youth is, is overwhelming. And I believe that uh, under her leadership, really, our sector will go a long way. I do want to also extend greetings, ladies and gentlemen, to our international community and those inclusive of our international honorable NACCW members. Um, and if I say international community, um, I'm also acknowledging the students, the graduates in child and youth care that are spread through uh, globally because they came to South Africa for uh, training in child and youth care. So I'm extending my greetings to all of you. I know that you have logged in and I did promise that I will recognize your presence. I also want to greet all the local um, um, community, ladies and gentlemen, and um, everyone who is in our motherland in South Africa, the child and youth care workers. And um, I also want to acknowledge the students and graduates as well, child and youth care workers who are in, 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 in Africa, because we have found a footprint of students that have come through to our country for uh, uh, studies and they have gone back home to, to Africa. Welcome to all of you and thank you very much for the honor uh, of you, uh, you know, taking your time to listening to my uh, talk this morning. I do want to observe all protocols, ladies and gentlemen, as I might not have enough time to acknowledge uh, each of you by your names. Much appreciation goes to the messages of support, um, ladies and gentlemen, by our pioneers in the field. I am humbled and honored to be sharing this platform with you as well. Um, a lot of you, I have, I have cited you in, in my write-ups. It is indeed an honor that we are in the same conference in this manner. I see this as, as, as being very humbling. Um, I also want to thank the partners and the stakeholders that are joining us this morning, um, ladies and gentlemen, and um, observing all protocols. I think I would have missed the greetings if I do not acknowledge Osingaye, direct translation, our child and youth care workers, our frontliners, our soldiers that spend sleepless nights because there are children out there who are without love, who are without care, who are without someone that will go all out and do whatever necessary to see a smile on their faces. I want to acknowledge all the child and youth care workers uh, who have acquired names. In this field, you, you acquire a lot of names. We are mothers to many, we are aunts to many, we are uncles, they are uncles, they are fathers and they are friends to many. And ladies and gentlemen, heads off to you this morning, uh, all our child and youth care workers in South Africa and outside of the borders of, of South Africa. My engagement this morning, ladies and gentlemen, once again, as, I, as I'm appreciative of the invitation that was extended by the NACCW to be part of this 23rd a biennial virtual conference. Um, my engagement this morning is on a journey of a child and youth care worker. I am indeed a child and youth care worker. I was saying to, to the program director earlier that I'm one of, of the very few people that have not jumped professions because I stayed in the field of child and youth care and I am here today and I am honored by, 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 by being uh, present to engage with the participants and the delegates in this engagement this morning. 
It shall be an honor for me, ladies and gentlemen, that in the little that I shall share with you within the specified time that I have been provided, it shall be an honor to me that as I share my journey as a child and youth care worker, both at a professional level and at a, at a personal level, that it shall serve the talk and the engagement shall serve as the seed that I want to plant to each and every one of you as child and youth care workers in the field who may still be asking yourselves the question, am I in the right field? Who may still be asking themselves, am I doing the right thing? Will it, will it ever bear fruit what I'm doing with these children? The little things that you do with the children that you work with, I do want to deposit to you and say to you this morning that they do matter. I do hope that you'll be encouraged and uh, find strength and conviction that you are indeed in the right profession because you're making a difference in the lives where it really matters. Let me introduce you to Pearl as a child, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I think Minister indicated, I do not forget to tell that I am a child and youth care worker. And I do not forget when I get a moment to tell my story because it's his stories that will be able to take us to places where we have not imagined. You know, there's a young person that's going to look at you as a child and youth care worker and hear your story and say, indeed, if that child and youth care worker could do it, so can I. So as I introduce you to Paul as a child, ladies and gentlemen, I am the last born of eight children. Um, my, both my parents have passed on. They are with the Lord. They were called to glory when I was still a child. Very vulnerable at the time, because this was when I, I had not even done uh, or completed my high school education. Both my parents were Christians. They believed in God. When things fell apart, all they could hold on to was believing that things will change because they always change. If you have got something that you're holding on to, if you believe that it will not always be that you, 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 you live in lack, that you live in poverty, that you are unable to fend for yourself. As a child, Pearl, as a child, she has experienced multiple forms of abuse that includes your psychological abuse, your physical abuse, emotional abuse, neglect. We talk about these things when we teach students. We talk about these things when we're engaging with our children. And as I give you this, I am, I'm trying to back for you to visualize and remember the kind of a child that you're working with. Pearl as a child has had suicidal thoughts. Pearl as a child has had sleepless nights because there was no food to eat. Pearl as a child has had uh, multiple instances where she wanted to run away from home. And it was always in the hope that when I run away, it will be to a better life. But thank God, because I was raised as a Christian child in UK at the time, at the time as a child, I had something to hold on to. I always believed that things will work out. So I'm saying this and I'm painting this picture to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and to all the child and youth care workers that are with us this morning, to say what I have painted for you is a child who has experienced loss, a child who has experienced grieving, a child who has experienced helplessness and hopelessness, a child who lost hope at some point, a child who thought that life might have just be better on the other side because things were bad as a child. That is the child you're working with. Whenever you're looking at, at when you remember the, the story that I'm telling you now, remember that is the little pale that was before you see Dr. Mlodra today. So out of the picture of Pearl as a child that I've just shared with you, I want you to know and remember that whatever you do with these children, you are planting seeds of hope. You are championing hope because you can only be an expert in the area where you have access. Some of us are blessed and honored to have platforms where I can speak and there are 1.2, 1.3 uh, people listening to what I am saying. But you have the platform of those five children where you have got the opportunity to deposit the seeds of hope. You have got the platform to develop those young people you have the platform to develop the little precious pearls that are under your care. So the little things that you do say, 
the little things that you, 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 you deposit, your little actions, it doesn't matter how little they are. Believe you me, they will generate a professor one day. One day after the children that you are taking care of, we're going to have Dr. Pearls. We're going to have leaders. We're going to have ministers. We're going to have professors and child and youth care workers just because of the work that you have done with these children and these young people. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a product of social services, which is what you are rendering to these children. I am a product of caring communities. I am a product of relational acts and relational practice, which we teach to some of our students to say, build a trusting relationship. I am a product of nurtured resilience because for some children, things are so overwhelming that resilience will not just kick in. It will take you as a child and youth care worker to deposit a seed of hope so that this child can be able to bounce back as Pearl was able to bounce back from her circumstances leading to choosing a profession in child and youth care that is going to help me to be able to deposit and give back because not every child is born resilient. I am a product of caregivers. I am a product of unconditional acceptance. All of these things that I am talking about, ladies and gentlemen, they help to mend the circle of courage that we always talk about. Mine was at some point broken. There was no sense of belonging. There was no sense of mastery. Because what do you do if your parents leave you as a child and you have got no certificate? But because of caring communities, because of each and every one of you child and youth care workers, you're sitting with Dr. Pearl today and I'm standing and I'm saying, even those children, even if they don't look lovable, half the time the children that you work with are not lovable. And they will never say thank you for the work that you're doing. But believe you me, you are depositing, you are planting seeds of hope where you're going to generate precious pearls that will want to make a difference because of the nurturing and the love and the acceptance that you have provided as a child and youth care worker. Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to indicate to you um, that yes, it has been a journey as a child and youth care worker, because I think that's what you're most interested in, but I couldn't leave out the part of Pearl as a child because I am saying to you, look at this child and see a future leader. Look at this child and see someone that's going to come up with a vaccine for what we are dealing with in this current time. So as a child and youth care worker, what I want to encourage you to do, this is what I have done in all the opportunities that I am humbled and have been granted within the field. You will not be able to do this work if you do not have compassion. You will not be able to do this work if you do not love the unlovable. Don't expect them to say thank you because they are broken. They are hurt. Thank you to them is not common sense like to any other child whose circle of courage is complete. I want to say to you as a child and youth care worker, see yourself as a role model. That when you wake up in the morning, know that there's someone who's looking at you and they are just looking for a seed of hope. As child and youth care workers, it is very important. Doesn't matter which setting you are at. You can be in government, you can be in an NGO sector, civil society, private, private sector. You have got to be able to see strengths in obvious weaknesses. Because when they display a, a, a certain behaviors, that's a language that we need to understand. They don't know how to say to you, I am hurting. But as a child and youth care worker, you need to be able to see strengths in the obvious weaknesses. Build rapport. Build rapport with these children. In my lifetime, I have found mothers I have adopted a minister where, you know, I have to remind myself that I'm talking to minister because I see a mother each time I hear her speak with passion and the love for children and young people, I see a mother. And as a child and youth care worker, that is what we're saying. 
be that role model, build rapport, build a trusting relationship with these young people because it's going to contribute and help them towards the journey of, 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 of healing. Allows these children to exercise their religion as well, ladies and gentlemen. I remember I was working in another institution where you know I will have to fight just to have allocation or a budget for every child to have a birthday cake. And then another institution challenged me where I would say that if that child wants to go to Roman Catholic, allow them to go. Allow them to go to Shembe, allow them to go to whatever religion, because each and every child has got to have something that where they, they are able to draw strength. So it doesn't help when we are in institutions and we clap them together and we take them to that church without recognizing which church really gives them the courage and the strength and the will and the zeal to wake up every morning and say things will get better. We're talking about life space as child and youth care workers. You are all the hope that they need. And when we're talking about championing hope, it is to these young people that do not have hope. When I am talking about championing hope as a child and youth care worker, it is to each and every one of you child and youth care workers out there who are questioning today whether you are in the right profession. Indeed, I want to say that you are in the right profession because the resilience that you have, the difference that you make in the lives of these young people is going to go a long way. You are turning circumstances around for children that may, not, may have not change if you're not a part of, 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 of their lives. As child and youth care workers, it's important to build support networks for these children. Because remember, they are in our institutions, but what we're saying is that we do not want them to uh, retire in our institutions. So how are they going to survive if we do not uh, release them at some point? If we do not build and nurture the resilience that they need and only create a culture of dependence? Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much uh, that you're doing the standing work that you're doing in the lives of children and young people. So as I've just reminded you of, of all of these things, and there's quite a lot that you can do as a child and youth care worker. So once you're done loving them, once you're done uh, turning uh, the, the obvious weaknesses into strengths, once you're done acknowledging their culture and acknowledging their religion, because it's what keeps them going, that is where you're going to find little pearls growing. That is where you're going to find doctors. That is where you're going to find young people who are going to come out of your institutions and say, I want to be a child and youth care worker because that person made a difference in my life. Because that person allowed me and, and provided me with the opportunities. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are encouraged this, this morning because what I want to say to you that even as in your, in your professional space, Things may not look good. There's still a lot that needs to be done within our sector, but I am where I am today as a proud child and youth care worker because I grabbed opportunities. I am where I am today because of thinking positively. If you set your mind on something, you will indeed achieve it. Whether the sector is professionalized or not, which is very important that the sector becomes fully recognized because um, you know, we, we, there are things that we should not, or rather the sector should not be struggling for in as far as the, 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 the professional recognition is concerned. But at your own individual space as a child and youth care worker, I want to encourage you to grab opportunities. I want to encourage you to think positively. I want to encourage you to cry out for help. Because when you have created all of these things that I spoke about uh, with the children that you're working with, you're going to have a child who cries out for help. Crying out for help is a sign of resilience. Saying I am hungry is a sign of resilience because a child who's not resilient, a child in youth care worker who's not resilient will not say I am not coping. I am overwhelmed by what I'm doing. And if we read on articles of child and youth care workers who've experienced burnout, some of them have, have taken their lives because it's just so overwhelming. What I'm saying to you today is cry out for help. And when you work with these young people and you build rapport, 
and you help them to, to, to grow from the level of hopelessness to hopefulness, they will not succumb to abuse. They will work hard to achieve what is around them and they will work hard to grab these opportunities. So as a child and youth care worker, ladies and gentlemen, I do have experience in working with families. I do have experience in working with communities in the academic environment, government and private sector, civil society. What I'm saying to you, to each and every one of you, whether the sector is progressing in a fast pace or in a slow pace, nothing stops you from achieving what you need to achieve. If you have put yourself in that position of getting that degree, of getting that diploma, of getting that certificate, nothing stops you from achieving what you need to achieve. And obviously that will come with a lot from your side to say, continuously develop yourself. So I miss the, 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 the challenges with professionalization that we continue to face. I am encouraging you to knock at the doors with your degree. I, I used to say to my students that I would be very sad that as we have released some of you as graduates with your bachelor's degree in child and youth care worker, I would be very sad to find that five years later, you have remained the same because you're not grabbing opportunities. So I am hoping that you will take what you have, the little that you have, which what Pearl has done, knock at the doors, grab the opportunities that are put before you. Get into these schools, give proposals, and tell the schools what is it that you can do. There's a lot that you need to do as a child and youth care worker, unfortunately, uh, within, within our context. We still need to prove who we are. We still need to explain what is it that we can offer within the school setting, within the community setting, but nothing stops you from doing that because you will not be able to be recognized by a department such as the Department of Social Development if you do not go out there and explain and also advocate so that the communities can understand what it is that you're capable of as a child and youth care worker. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not want to not highlight the fact that child and youth care as a sector, Honorable Minister, remains with challenges. The sector itself is challenged with having a lot of institutions that were offering child and youth care, not getting the necessary support. And we are losing institutions of higher education that are offering child and youth care as a course. There are challenges with job descriptions of, of child and youth care workers. There are challenges with funding for child and youth care. There are inadequate benefits for child and youth care workers. They work long hours. Strain us, I must say. If I think of Pearl as a child and I'm thinking of a child and youth care worker, that must still support their family. That must still provide, be a provider. That must still be sober for their own children after working hours. It, it really is painful to imagine how child and youth care workers are making it. Hence, even with the conference at this conference, we do plead with those that are able to support the sector to say, we will not have pearls in the future if the sector is not supported in the way that it should be supported because we are doing great work, the holistic work that we're doing with these young people. So ladies and gentlemen, I do hope that with the little that I've said in the limited time that I've been provided, that you are hopeful, that you can imagine yourself, because if you do not see it, if you do not see yourself being a professor or a doctor one day, if you do not even imagine yourself being a minister one day, it's not gonna happen. The conviction begins with you. You need to accept yourself. You need to love yourself. Sometimes you need to learn to hug yourself even as a child and youth care worker, learn to hug yourself, learn to look in the mirror and affirm yourself as a child and youth care worker that it didn't go well with this child. They still want to kill themselves, but I have deposited. I was there when they needed love. I was there when they needed to be cared for. As I move to closure, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to all the child and youth care workers that it's very important that you take care of yourself. 
the work that you are doing is taxing in the mind, it's taxing in the body, and it's very important that you heal yourself and that you take care of yourself. Find something that recharges you, something that gives you a reason to wake up every day. That if it, if it failed with this child, they ended up committing suicide under your care, you need to be able to find something that will take you back because come the following day, you need to go out there again and be a friend and be a mother and be a caring person to all these child and young people that are looking that they are looking up to you. Never stop developing yourself. I, I still say to uh, my colleagues, even in the office, that I have not, st I have not stopped um, uh, learning because we learn every day. So never stop developing yourself. And that is how you will be able to find yourself being where I am today. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Pearl Mlocha. I didn't introduce myself. I am a director in the National Department of Social Development under the leadership of Umama Lindiwe uh, Zulu, our minister. And I thank you. <laughs>